So, Paul, we know the sun probably not just started off hot and has been cooling forevermore. Uh, chemical reactions, chemical energy powers, you know, food, breakfast, uh, you know, cars. We use it a lot. Why could that be the option? So it's like fire. Yeah, fire. Yeah, there like you many go. cultures thought the sun's like a very big fire, and the fire is carbon combining with oxygen. Yep. So we've got this periodic table. So maybe we could find some elements that are in the sun and combine them to liberate some chemical energy. All right. What elements have we got in the sun? Well, we know this because of all the spectroscopy we talked about. That's right. Um, so which elements here do you think would be good to combine to make some energy? Well, I would, I would feel that we should have hydrogen, right? There's a lot of hydrogen in it. Yeah, we want to use the elements that are at the top of this diagram. Remember, this is on a log scale, so this one is not just a little bit more than these ones. It's like thousands of times more. So, so we're not going to go choose lead or uh, cesium because it's millions of times less than hydrogen. So combining hydrogen with something else, you can't combine hydrogen with hydrogen. And That's get, right. You, you get a small amount of energy from molecular hydrogen, but not really enough to be very useful. Mm. So what, what can we combine? I mean, helium is pretty useless. It's chemically inert, doesn't do very much. We wouldn't choose beryllium because there's a lot less of it. So our best choice would be the next most common one, which is oxygen, carbon, Bubble. or maybe a neon's not Neo. much use, but maybe a magnesium, silicon, or iron, or something like that. Well, oxygen's used here for, as you said, fires, combustion, yeah. hydrogen and oxygen. So let's work out the calculation of oxygen. Yeah. Oxygen is the next most common. And again, because it's a log scale, there's actually like 10 times more of it than any of these. Yep. So if we work out the number we're going to get for oxygen, we might double it if we add in carbon and everything else, but we're not going to get 10 times more. That's right. So combine hydrogen and oxygen. Now, that's a reaction that's very well understood. You take two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, and you combine them to make water. Plus energy. energy. And energy is what we want to power the sun. And, you know, for only nine kilograms worth of stuff, 120 million joules of energy seems like a lot. Yeah. Now, we need, for every kilogram of hydrogen, we need eight of oxygen. The reason is that uh, oxygen is an atomic weight of 16 times that of hydrogen because it's got eight protons and eight yep. neutrons. And so you're going to need to um, add uh, two hydrogen, so that's two yep. plus 16, so it's an eight to one ratio, 16 okay. to two ratio. Um, so he's nine kilograms of water and 120 mill megajoules of energy. That sounds like a lot. That sounds like a lot. And there's a lot of hydrogen. There's a lot of hydrogen. The trouble is going to be there isn't much oxygen. The sun is at uh, most 1% oxygen. So you could combine all the hydrogen with the oxygen and still have lots and lots of hydrogen left and over. And since you need all that much more oxygen into that ratio, that really is going to be the limiting factor here. Yeah. So what you imagine was the sun would run out of oxygen and then burn all the carbon, maybe all the iron and everything else pretty quickly and just leave hydrogen and water and hydrogen and something carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide or whatever. But, but as we saw with those elements, a lot of those are just much smaller, right? So even yes. if you burn through all of them, it's not going to give you that much more. So let's do the f calculations right. for oxygen. So the sun's about 1% oxygen, yep. a bit less than that, but we'll call it 1% to be on the optimistic side. <laughs> um, so we've got 1% of the total mass of the sun is 2 by 10 to the 28 kilograms of oxygen, which is a lot. Yep. Now, for every 8 kilograms of this, you get one of hydrogen. So we divide this by 8 to work out how much hydrogen we're burning. Okay, so we're burning that much hydrogen, we're burning that much ox oxygen. We have a lot of hydrogen, so that's fine. Yep. Now, we know that each kilogram of hydrogen releases 120 megajoules. That's a combustion energy that's yep. uh, very well known. Many rockets are powered by yep. this. That's right. Um, so. And it's actually about the best combustion energy you can get from anything. Okay. Um, so you multiply that, uh, so you get 1.2 by 10 to the 8 joules for every kilogram of hydrogen you combine with oxygen. Yep, and so now we have to multiply that by how much hydrogen we have? Yep, so multiply this by that, and you get 3 by 10 to the 35, 3 with 35 zeros after it joules of energy. Now that's a lot more when we were doing the cooling. When we looked at the sun, no, it's actually that's... less. It's actually less because oh. again, divide this through. Oh. Again, divide by sixty by sixty by twenty-four by three hundred sixty-five. So you take the energy, divide by how much energy the sun burns per second to work out number yeah. of seconds. And instead of being more like ten to the ten seconds, it's more like ten to the eight seconds. And, and that's only twenty-five years. So twenty-five measly years. Wait, 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 so this is less than cooling. Yeah. A lot less. We are at least getting a thousand years with cooling. This is twenty-five. Like, the, we, we just kind of know this is physically not right. So we think on Earth of combustion as being really pretty big. I mean, massive flames, bombs, whatever it is, lots of energy. But compared to what you need to power the sun, it's pathetic. So we should go back to cooling at least. Yes, so the, well, cooling is better, but neither of them is going to work. Mm, so we have to find something else. We have to find something else.